Known for his striking looks and undeniable charisma, Henry Cavill has become a household name, leaving fans mesmerized by his on-screen performances and, of course, his ever-evolving appearance. From his days as Superman to his recent film Argyle, we'll explore the subtle changes and possible enhancements that have led some to speculate about the possibility of plastic surgery. In 2002, at the age of 19, you can see that Henry has a slight widow peak. He also has full eyebrows that are horizontal in nature, and as we know, this is a very masculine type of trait. Henry has a prominent mandible, and he has very strong mental tubercles. Just like we have tubercles in our lips, as I've pointed out in many other videos, we also have these different prominences in different parts of our bony structure. This is different from a dimpling in the chin, which is usually caused by a dehiscence of the actual muscle that lives in that area. He here we have prominent bony prominences just lateral to that mentalis muscle. He also has full tooth show when he smiles. Jumping ahead to 2007 where he's 24 years old. What you see here are forehead rightids or wrinkles and this is caused by the frontalis muscle. The wrinkles always run perpendicular to the underlying muscle. The frontalis muscle runs in this direction so then the lines that you see on the skin surface are going to be horizontal in nature. Some people start Botox injections in their 20s and 30s as a form of prejuvenation, where they're trying to delay the onset of deeper wrinkles. Prejuvenation with Botox is a very different use case compared to filler injections. With filler injections, there's nothing preventative about it. You're only using it to cover up signs of aging that have already presented or adjusting a certain anatomical feature that maybe you're not completely fond of. You can also see that Henry has tear troughs present. The left side is a bit more pronounced than the right. This is also called infraorbital hollowing, and it's something that most of us develop over time. Keep in mind that lighting has a strong impact on how our infraorbital hollowing appears. Even when we shoot these types of videos, we have a light that's directly facing me so that my infraorbital hollowing is not as obvious. Here's what happens when we turn those lights off. So now that the overhead light has been turned on and the lights facing me have been turned off, you can see that the infraorbital hollowing is a lot more obvious. And this will impact how Henry appears in various photographs that are taken of him as it applies to everybody else. Henry also has good definition to his Cupid's bow. And this is an area that's very difficult to adjust. Some people ask me if there's a surgery that can better define their Cupid's bow area. The truth is there really is no surgery for that. Sometimes people use filler to try to adjust some of the contours of the Cupid's bow, but that that does run the risk of looking somewhat artificial. Henry also has a similar volume between his upper and lower red lips. It's about a one-to-one -one ratio. In 2008, at the age of 25, Henry has a Norwood II type of hairline. He has that slight frontotemporal recession in the corners, but he does have preserved anterior temporal peaks. And keep in mind that when we talk about the forehead dimensions, it's not just how high up the hairline actually starts, it's also the projection anteriorly. So if you have an expansion of your forehead that goes up and goes out to the side, that's when the forehead starts to look bigger. And one of the ways that you can get that expansion laterally is with the temporal peaks starting to recede as well as the frontotemporal areas. So when people come to my surgical practice looking for restoration of their hairline, one of the discussion points becomes, do we adjust anything with the temples or do we leave them alone? And that's something that we assess on a very case-by-case -case basis. Keep in mind that adding grafts to the temporal area does consume quite a bit of your donor supply. So we need to make sure that that's a good investment of grafts. Henry here has those low masculine eyebrows. When I look at his nose, what I see jump out at me the most is that he has a prominence to his left nasal bone. Remember that the upper part of the nose along the bridge is going to be your nasal bones. That's an actual bone, right? There's two 
nasal bones and they're joined right at the center. As you travel further down the bridge of the nose, that becomes cartilage. Even though it feels like hard bone, it's actually cartilage that you're feeling lower down on your bridge. When I look at Henry's nose, that left nasal bone to me looks like it kind of juts out and it appears that way through the years. Henry has a strong jawline. That's one of his distinguishing features. And this is from a combination of different elements, which include the mandible size itself, the hyoid bone positioning, as well as the amount of submental fat. All of those things need to align in order to give you that very sharp type of jawline with the prominence that you see here. Let's say, for example, if his mandible was of a similar size and his hyoid bone was still well positioned, but he had that extra submental fat. Now, all of a sudden, that contour would really change. Similarly, if he had a smaller mandible, but a well positioned hyoid bone and very little submental fat, it again would not look like it does in his case. So, all three of those elements need to essentially align to give you this type of appearance. In 2009, at the age of 26, I see no change. In 2011, at the age of 28, I wanted to point out here that Henry's eyes are not the same. He has what's called segmental heterochromia. You can see a patch of brown in his left iris, but otherwise his eyes are blue. This is a phenomenon that's much more common in cats and dogs, but it's rare in humans. Most people are born with this trait, but some people can get it from injury or from illness. I think that this feature is inconsequential to his overall appearance, but it's something worth noting and something that's interesting to learn about. In 2012, at the age of 29, I see no change. In 2013, at the age of 30, Superman is now approaching a Norwood three type of hairline. You can see deeper frontotemporal recession. And now because of that, his widow's peak is even more pronounced, but his temples are still intact. And that again, reduces the width of his forehead, even though the vertical axis is increasing in forehead size. Many patients come to me with this type of hairline configuration and they're looking for surgical enhancement to the hairline. But the most important thing with this type of appearance is actually to preserve it because you can see in Henry's case and in many of my patients, there's still excellent hair in the frontal scalp, mid scalp crown in those DHT sensitive areas. And the key is to protect that hair. It's much more important to do that than to actually get a hair transplant. A hair transplant can adjust some of the contours of the hairline, sure. But really, the most important thing with this type of appearance at age 30, like Henry is here, is to protect the existing hair. And we talk about that a lot on the channel, and we have medications available for that purpose at feelconfident.com. In 2014, at the age of 31, you can see that Henry has now more prominence to his nasal labial folds. This is something that happens to all of us as we age, and it's not an area that we should constantly look to fill. Henry still has a nicely preserved neckline. And I don't think this is because he's been mewing. This is, of course, mostly due to his incredible genetics. And it's also coupled with proper dieting that helps maintain that neckline. In 2015, at the age of 32, Henry has this excellent beard. It's slightly more patchy on the left hand side and the cheek height level is slightly lower on the left than it is on the right. And these types of asymmetries are very normal when it comes to facial structure. He overall has a very symmetrical face, but this is one asymmetry that I noticed. And again, these types of asymmetry are what actually add to a person's attractiveness, whether you're a man or a woman. In 2016, at the age of 33, what I'm seeing here is that Henry has these bony changes, but I think they're likely due to weight loss rather than different types of injectables or buckle fat removal. I just think that most of this can be attributed to various changes in his weight because you see it reverse later on as well. So it's not just his cheeks that narrow in as he loses weight. It's also the area around the eyes that starts to look more hollow. And that is what happens as we lose weight or as we gain weight, then you expect a more global change in the face, not just in any one area. And so it was interesting to learn that Henry was actually teased in private school for his weight. They used to call me fat cavil. Henry told men's fitness in 2015. I actually had rolls of fat 
on me, he said. These early experiences, of course, shape who we become and how we treat ourselves and our bodies over time. I have this video about proving haters wrong where I go through some of my life experiences and how that shaped who I've become. So make sure to check out that video if you're interested. In 2017, at the age of 34, I see no change and that's the same through 2019. In 2021, now at the age of 38, again, it looks to me like not much has changed down to the exact upper lid creases that he had before. I've looked through many pictures and it just seems to me like not much is changing other than the natural aging process taking its course. In 2022, and 2023, I see no change. In 2024, age 40, all I'm seeing here is more upper eyelid hooding. This, I think, is a combination of dermatochalasis, where our upper eyelid skin gets a bit more baggy, as well as lateral eyebrow descent. Those two things are usually what account for a more hooded upper eyelid appearance. I think he looks quite natural and very youthful for his age. As we conclude this exploration, I encourage you to go to the comment section and leave your thoughts below. What are your thoughts on Henry Cavill's facial evolution? Do you think it's the result of natural aging, lifestyle changes, or potentially enhancements from plastic surgery?